So what we have here is uh, an edited shot of Brooke and the pizza scene. Nice going, Ken. What? And uh, so what we want to do now is we want to take this edited shot and put it down on the timeline. And so we drag it from there down here to the timeline. And now we're going to take a look at it. So now what we want to do is we want to add some color to this thing because uh, the balance is just horrible. It's way too dark. So we're going from our uh, selections of uh, uh, shots that we've loaded into the computer and we're going to go to the effects uh, choices and we're going to pick the color corrector. And we're going to drag that down into the timeline and add it directly to that clip and you notice it turns red there so that means it's got to be rendered now and we're doing this to every single shot in the movie so now we double click on this and uh, we get that up into our edited clip and you'll notice now that the color corrector the one I'm going to click right here is now there and this is the color corrector and it has uh, three different levels. It has the whites, the mids, and the blacks, and it has the uh, color saturation. And this thing I'm doing here is setting the white balance. So when I, that little eyedropper, you click it on the thing that is supposed to represent the most white thing, and you notice right away we get a big improvement in the quality. It's got a long way to go. This is a really dark, dark shot. And it's got a lot of problems. So I'm going to click on the whites here to brighten this up and that actually didn't do much and I really added a lot of white so we're gonna add some mids here and that's a big improvement but we've still got a lot to do and one of the big big things that helps all of these for some reason is when you really 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 boost that color saturation and right there that's a big help that has really done quite a lot but uh, this uh, we still have a way to go on this one. And so I'm going to go back to the color corrector. I'm going to lower the black levels just a bit. Get a little bit more black in there. That tends to help bring out the color. And that has done that. Now you can just take a look between where we started on the right and what we're working on here on the left. And there's slowly but surely we're getting the improvement here in this shot. So now what we want to do is we're going to add some red to this, and I'm going to do this too much. Just to show you, even with just adding a level of 40 out of 100, that that's way too much. So we don't need anywhere near that. All You you don't have to do very much, and this is one of the things that has surprised me. We're going to put 10 in. And that is another really, really big improvement. But this isn't done. We've uh, we're gonna have to. And if I would quit goofing on the wrong button here and undoing what I've already done, why did I do that? Let's get that back up to ten. And uh, better better check it out. Yeah. So uh, we're going to uh, add some blue into this now. You'd, you'd really be surprised. You can add red, green, and blue in this, and you would really be surprised at what uh, adding blue does. That really freshens that up quite a bit. And we're, we're still going to boost these mid-levels here. I'm trying to get this shot a little brighter so it blends in with the other stuff. And we're going to add some more white. And we're, we're getting there on this one. Let's take a look at it. And because it hasn't been rendered, it, this is why it kind of bounces around like that. It's not smooth. And look at, look at the vast improvement from the left side to the right. So now we're going to go down here, and we're going to render this shot. What, that, what this is basically doing is that this is saving frame by frame all this information that we've added so every single frame has that red moved up to 10 and that green blue moved up to 10 and those mids and whites bumped up and that saturation bumped up and that 
uh, black level moved down a bit. It's going to be done for every frame. Now, in 1997, when we were using uh, the other system, which uh, was an Adobe system, Adobe Premiere, uh, it would take hours and hours and hours just to do this. Now, when I did the whole film for the second cut, it did take a full day, but that's the whole film. It would take a whole day just to do a little 10-minute hunk, and we've, we've done this in just a couple of minutes here. So now it's ready. And imagine doing this on every single clip. And wow, look at that. Just look at the way that jumped up like that. That was just an amazing difference. And this isn't even as good as it looks in the, in, in the clip that I included in the sneak peek here. So now this is a widescreen production. That's the way we framed all these shots. If you remember, we had the little pieces of tape on the top and bottom of the monitor to keep us in line. So we select matte, and we go down here to widescreen. And you just drag that over, put it in the clip. It turns red again, we'll have to re-render that. And uh, there's our widescreen. Now that is, uh, that's the European widescreen. We need the American standard, which is 1.85 to 1. And that's this one right here. And there's our widescreen. And so we're going to take a look at this, check for framing. Nice going, Ken. What? I'll make sure uh, everything's, uh, nothing's out of the frame there that we want in the frame. And this one looks pretty good. And that is how we did that one. Now in this scene we have a little different problem, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. You've lived in Seattle for 25 years, and you've never been up on the Space Needle? Well, I've had other things to do. For 25 years? What's so strange about that? Okay, so the problem that we have here is that, is in that middle clip, which is over my shoulder onto Michelle, and that's her best line reading of that but there's a little problem with that and the problem with that is this we've got that person walking through the shot and we've got uh, me looking around now you'll notice that Michelle never moves past that little uh, railing there right where the we first start seeing the lady walk and because in all this in all the uh, takes of this setup we never move the camera we can do something real tricky here we can find uh, something from another take where I'm not moving around and nobody's walking through the shot and superimpose that over this really good take of Michelle and that's what happens when you put it on the uh, top of the timeline like this anything above on that second row there is gonna be superimposed over that uh, shot beneath it and you're know, probably asking yourselves well how does that save Michelle's great line reading well what we're going to do is, is we're going to crop that top image. And uh, we selected uh, the wireframe here. We've got this little tool. And we're just going to, if I can grab a hold of it, we're just going to move this over. And we're going to crop out this, everything from this other take that we don't want, which is uh, Michelle, because we want the, the best take for that. But we want me not looking around and nobody walking through the shot. So by cropping it off right at that railing, that's actually going to do that. Because anything in black there, that'll be filled in with, with the good thing below. That's the magic of computers. So we're going to render this sucker now. And this, uh, this little process saved our butt on this scene. You can see you could before I moved in front of it here. Uh, a couple down, a couple shots down, I've done the exact same thing. And that helped save this scene quite a bit. It was a much better looking scene because of that. So now that we're done uh, rendering this, let's uh, set this needle here up right where we want it. And let's take a look at what we have wrought. And we will magically see that uh, the lady is gone, and I'm keeping my head forward. For 25 years, have you ever been up on the Space Needle? Well, I've had other things to do. For 25 years? What's so strange about that? And in the process, save the good line reading.